is up. Finally, I am live. I'm just putting my phone in the tripod. Hello, friends. Okay, we're doing Herpes Anonymous again. As always, I'm excited to be live with you. I'm excited to be talking to you. Yesterday, we did Herpes Anonymous. Um, and I really loved the questions we were asked. We had some questions from people basically asking about, hey, I don't have herpes, but my partner is disclosed to me that he or she has herpes. And what do I do? What do I do going forward? What am I supposed to do? Grab my teeth because I need this. I look exhausted today. So let's go through. I'm going to tap the screen. I love how TikTok right now has Easter eggs when you tap the screen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your opportunity to join me live. This is where I answer your questions anonymously. So what you would do is if you go to the link in my bio, um, you'll see that there is a, you can submit your question. It is $5. It's herpes anonymous, $5. And um, the idea behind this and the reason why I started doing this was I really wanted to go deep in the questions. I really wanted to make a change. I really wanted to support. I really wanted to see people grow from these Q and A's. Um, I've, I feel like I've answered every single herpes question there is that are like, what is an outbreak? What does it look like? I have thousands of videos that you can look at. I have thousands and thousands of videos. I have hundreds of blog posts. I have Lots of resources for you on life with herpes to check out to um, find support. So what I really want now is for you to go deeper and for you to go deeper in your healing process. So that is why we're doing the herpes live. So let me get to the questions that you guys have asked. Again, they're five dollars. They're super affordable, and we're gonna go deep. So let me pull it up. Of course, I should have pulled this up before. Um. Okay. Sound good, guys? You guys like this? All right. Marcus. Marcus asked, I was recently diagnosed with genital herpes and I'm struggling to, with the mix of emotions and concerns about my future dating life. Very realistic, right? That's one of the biggest concerns when we were first diagnosed is how am I, how am I going to date again? Is anyone going to accept me? Um, before this, I had just started seeing someone and I'm very interested in, but now I'm terrified of how she'll react when I tell her, how do I bring this topic up? What's the best way to explain my situation in the, and take the precautions and the precautions we can take. I'm worried this might end things before it even starts. Yeah, that's a huge, huge, huge fear. And it's a huge, um, it, it's, it's a very realistic. So. Sophia. No, wait. That was from Marcus. Hi, Scarlett. Um, okay, so when we're first diagnosed with herpes, we are all concerned about how are we going to be accepted? Who's going to accept us, right? And the reason here is why we are having a super difficult time with it is because we don't accept it ourselves. Somewhere along the line, we lost that relationship. We lost that connection. We lost that self-love. It's such a corny word, but we lost that appreciation for ourselves. We lost that self-respect. And a lot of times getting herpes is what takes us to learn that it's not about herpes. It's about reconnecting with ourself. Is anybody out there, anybody watching, have you had that experience where you're like, you know what? The issue wasn't herpes. It's what brought me to the forefront. And that's what I discovered when I was diagnosed in 2011. It was like, the issue wasn't herpes, the issue was me. Has anyone else experienced that with being diagnosed? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. So um, somewhere, Marcus, you've lost that respect for yourself. And by being diagnosed with herpes, you are going to be forced to get that back. So what does that mean? And I was just uh, having somebody on our support group call on Monday talking about that. She was like, I don't feel like I can date because I don't even find myself attractive right now. So how is somebody going to find me attractive? Okay. So 
here are some things that I want us to do. Here's some things that I want us to look at. Does anybody else resonate with this? Are you watching and going like, yep, I totally resonate with this. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments because um, I hope it's not just Marcus and I. <laughs> All right, so some things I want you to do. I want you to write down what it is that you feel you're not capable of doing now that you have herpes. So like you're not capable of finding love. You're not capable of dating. You're not capable of, you're not going to be married. You're not going to have a, a family. You're not going to, whatever these things are, you're going to be rejected, right? I want you to write down all these things and I'm just throwing them out of the bucket here. I want you to spend some time writing down your concerns. Okay. That's, that can be one day. The next day, or come back to it or whatever, I want you to demystify or destigmatize, not destigmatize, I want you to prove those things wrong. So like, if your you're thing is like, nobody's gonna love me because I'm dirty because I have herpes. Okay, well, I'm sure you can find proof in other relationships with other people that that's total BS, right? Like, that's ridiculous. Why would somebody not love me because I have herpes? That's ridiculous, right? Then I want you to go, so write all those out. Like that doesn't make sense because whatever. Then I want you to look at it and say, okay, the issue is I do not love myself and I don't love myself. So therefore nobody is going to love me, right? It's not herpes. Okay, so then what do we start to do to build that back? Um, someone just said, my partner has herpes. I love him to death. We work through it and we still haven't, and I still haven't contracted it. Exactly. Right. So these like ideas that we're not going to have partners is completely false. Okay. So what can we do? What can you do Marcus to work through this? Number one is start, um, number one, start, hold on, I'm trying to get. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay, wait, sorry, I'm, I have, I'm getting messaged over here. Okay. Okay, so what are some things that you can do to build out that self-confidence? I'd like you to write down, this is more work. I'd like you to write down a list of consequences of you not finding your self-worth. So like, if I don't love myself, then I'm not going to be able to be into a healthy relationship, right? If I don't love myself, I'm never going to be that partner that I'm meant to be. If I don't love myself, I'm never going to be able to be a, a father that's able to give the foundation to my children, right? So these are like heavy and deep, but when you write down those consequences of not being able to find, to, to be able to reconnect with yourself and realize it's not herpes, there's some other things that we need to do, then that list is like, damn, I need to make these changes. Okay. So how do, then how do we change this? That's, that should give you the fire underneath to help you make those changes. So what do we start doing? We start listening to life with herpes. We potentially find a therapist. We, um, start doing things that fill ourselves up and daily we begin to break out of that cycle. Okay. Um, so I'm on a live and I'll be off. In the hey, welcome back. I see you, so. Oh, I'm on, yeah. Hi. It's my cousin. Okay, so um, how do you bring up this topic to someone you started seeing? That was my, my long answer. But how do you bring up a topic to someone you started seeing? I, I really recommend that when you're gonna disclose you have herpes, I would bring up the umbrella conversation, right? The umbrella conversation is not, hey, I have herpes, what do you wanna do about it? The umbrella conversation is, hey, I really like you, I really like where this is going, we've been dating for a week, a month, five years, I don't know, whatever it is, five years is a long time before we have that conversation, but whatever it is. And you start to have the conversation of, what does our relationship look like? And this is really important for me that I have this conversation with you because I've been diagnosed with herpes. And it's really important that we have this conversation, right? Um, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? 
It's something that it's a lifelong STD. It is something that's extremely common. Two out of three people have HSV-1, one out of six have HSV-2. It's something that a lot of people have. Um, have you been tested for it before? I recommend you get tested. Let's get tested before we're intimate so that we can see where everybody's at, what page we're on. Maybe you have it. Someone just asked, how do you know you have it? You, a lot of times you don't know. Most people are asymptomatic for HSV. And um, it's what, so, so, most people have HSV, HSV and most people that have it don't know they have it. So your partner very well might have it and you may have no idea. That partner may have no idea. Is it better for people to deal with other people that have it? It's a great question on this and, and I think this really re is relevant for what Marcus is asking. You don't have to, if you have herpes, you don't have to date someone that has herpes. You don't have to stay in that lane. Um, that's a big misconception that we think like, oh, I have to stay with this person now that I have herpes. You don't have to stay with this person now that you have herpes. So you don't have to stay with this person. You don't have to date someone who has herpes if you have herpes. You are able to make up your own relationship and you're able to make up your own set of rules with that partner. Okay, last question. I mean, last part of the question. Um, best way to take precautions. So number one, Marcus is to have a communicate with your partner. What is it like? What are you doing to like, do you get outbreaks? Um, how often do you get outbreaks? What type do you have? Communicate this with your partner. The next step is if you want to take an antiviral, if you want to take the, the Valtrex or Valcyclovir, that is going to help keep you, uh, the virus dormant. It's not, it's not mandatory. It's something that's going to be prescribed to you by your doctor. And it's something that you can decide if you want to take, you don't have to take it. Um, the next thing I would talk about is taking some supplements. So since you have herpes, Marcus, I would talk about taking lysine. Lysine is an essential amino acid. It is a protein that helps block the replication of the HSV virus, all right? Super important. I have it pinned for you right now. You can check it out. This is a non-negotiable for me. I take this daily. We can also consume foods that are high in lysine. Um, but this helps block the replication, aka it helps the HSV virus from having babies in your body, right? Viruses replicate. So this, this is like number one, it's linked for you. The next thing I would do, Marcus, is I would talk about, gosh, why do I not know where my things are? I would look at monolaurin. Okay, monolaurin is lauric acid. It is found in um, naturally, we naturally consume this when we are babies and we get this from our mother's breast milk and it helps us with bacteria in our bodies. It helps us also with enveloped viruses. The HSV virus is enveloped, right? So if it just basically is an overall immune system booster. So if you have something on something going bacterial going on, that's going to be really helpful to help keep your immune system. Meanwhile, when you have the HSV, this helps break down the outer level, outer layer of an enveloped virus, and it um, allows our immune system to penetrate. This is the next thing that's going to be really important. Um, side effects of taking lysine. You know, it is a supplement. It is something that is meant to supplement your diet. I personally don't know of any side effects of taking lysine. I am not a doctor. Um, you might want to ask your doctor. It's something that I did not take when I was pregnant, um, or when I had a newborn and I was breastfeeding, but, um, it is basically, we consume lysine. It's a protein that we consume and we have to consume it. It's essential in our bodies. Um, so that's what I would do, Marcus. Um, if you are trying to help take precautions, of course you can always do the conduct. I think I answered all of your questions. Okay, Sophia, my next question is from Sophia. Did that answer everyone's questions about supplements, about uh, things for the hearts, guys, or Easter eggs? Question about outbreaks. What are some common outbreaks you can have? Um, so HSV can go oral, it can go genital, it can go ocular, or it can go on your fingers. It can really go anywhere in your body but it can be um, most common is oral or genital. So HSV-1, HSV-2, it doesn't matter what type you have, it can really go anywhere. 
Ocular is less common. Most common is oral. So the most common is oral, then it goes genital, then it goes ocular. I don't know about fingers or ocular, which one is more common. Um, fingers are not as common. It used to be very common when we had dentists that didn't wear gloves or we didn't, you know, like wash our hands as much. But um, that are, that's kind of how outbreaks work. Okay, Sophia, my boyfriend of three years recently confessed to me that he has been diagnosed with genital herpes after a routine checkup, likely from a previous relationship. Well, I hope it's from a previous relationship, Sophia. Um, we've had a strong and trusting relationship and this news left me feeling a mix of emotions uh, from confusion to to concerned about our future together, especially regarding our sex life and potential health risks. How do we navigate this new reality together, ensuring that we both feel safe and supported? Yeah, so totally understand. So let's just uh, let's just deconstruct this. So herpes can be dormant in our system for a long time, right? You may have picked it up at 20 and had your first outbreak at 40. It's very common for that to happen. Now, most people get their outbreaks within two weeks of coming into contact with the HSV virus. But again, some people, the virus can be dormant or they have such a mild outbreak, they don't know they have it. Now, one of the things to ask your boyfriend, Sophia, is did he know he had herpes and he just now is telling you? Or, because um, that would be something that I would really want to investigate, especially in a relationship, right? You want that foundation, you want that house to be built on a solid foundation, not this, um, not this, well, I didn't tell you because I didn't know how to tell you, right? So that would definitely be something to communicate with him. But for a lot of you out there, like when there's like, my girlfriend didn't know, my boyfriend didn't know, they really may not have known. Um, have you gotten tested, Sophia? Because if you've been with your boyfriend for three years, you've obviously come in contact with it. I recommend you getting tested. Um, I can understand why this news left you feeling with a mix of emotions. You're confused, you're angry, you're pissed off. Um, your future together, you're not sure what you are going to want to do. Like, do you trust him? I don't know, you know? Um, but as far as living with HSV, and you can tell people here on, um, on the live, they're saying that like, Hey, I've had herpes for a long time. My partner's never gotten it. I can speak for myself. I've been with my husband for 10 years. He does not have herpes. I do. Right. So there's lots of people in our support group. Same thing one partner has herpes, the other partner does not. So there's a lot of ways to prevent transmission. I was just talking about this in the last one with Marcus, but it's going to be really important for you guys to communicate, right? Honestly, Sophia, if you've already been with him for three years and you haven't picked it up, that's a great sign. What you're going to want to do specifically as a female is to keep your immune system strong. That means BV, that means gut health, that means vaginal health, that means um, taking supplements that are going to boost that. Somebody I want you to look at, and I am going to tag her or do something, is you're going to look at Coach Sarah Joy on Instagram, and she is going to be able to help you with your vaginal health and um, gut health. So that's going to be really important. A lot of times for us women, we get herpes because we have BV or we have yeast infections or have UTIs, and we just have like a whole issue going on down there and don't have enough good bacteria and so therefore we're not able to fight the hsv virus okay um so that's something i really want to encourage you to do um are there any potential health risks you know there's some people that we there, there are okay i'm gonna say we don't know we know what we know today about hsv right a year from now we may know more we know what we know today and hsv is a virus that lives in our nervous system and it pops up when we're stressed out. It pops up when our immune system's compromised. It pops up and causes annoying blisters that can get in the way of a vacation, that can get in the way of things like that. Other than that, that's all it is. So, um, as far as your intimacy, I'm gonna leave that up to you for you and your partner to decide what you wanna do. Are you gonna use condoms? Do you want your partner to take the antiviral? Are you gonna be taking lysine monolaurin, which I have pinned here for you to check out, which I talk a lot about. Are you gonna be taking monolaurin? Are you gonna be taking lysine? Does your partner take lysine? Okay, it's all there for us. Um, 
linked for you. You could check it out. I'm a huge proponent. I just talked a lot about it on the last live Q and A, so I'm not going to go into details, but that's, that can be really helpful. Whatever you can do to boost your immune system is going to be key in preventing you from getting HSV. How do you navigate your new reality together, ensuring you both feel safe and supported? I would say the best thing that you can do is just work on communication. That's going to be the key there and continue, continue to communicate and ask questions. Um, how are you feeling? What's going on? How does he feel? A lot of times we forget about our partner's feelings. It's all about us. We think it's all about us, but we need to remember what, what's going on in our partner's life. How does he feel? He obviously is feeling awful that he either wasn't able to tell you for three years or just found out. So whatever it is, he's dealing with his own shit as well. So I would definitely remember that, right? Remember that he's dealing with his own shit. All right, friends. Thank you for joining me on our Herpes Anonymous. Thanks for spending time with me. People are saying you have a fear of having a relationship. Absolutely, that's a legit fear when we're diagnosed with herpes. I'm going to challenge you to say, was that a fear you had prior? Is that a fear you had prior? Okay, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the shares. Thanks for being live with me. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. I will see you soon in the next Herpes Anonymous tomorrow. If you have questions, go to the link in my bio, fill out your Herpes Anonymous question. I will answer it live. And here we go. All right, friends, have a great day.